I'm absolutely distraught, saddened. I'm absolutely, no, I'm saddened and what else am I? I think I'm shaking. Yeah, I think I'm shaking. I'm saddened and I'm shaking off of this news. I really, really am. Because it looked like there was some light in the tunnel. It looked like we were going to get some good news. It looked like things were going to go up for us. Because on Sneaker Twitter, all of a sudden, the news erupted that the Tom Sachs and Nike Mars Yards, the 3.0s, were due to come out. Right, And these shoes are legendary. I've owned a pair of the Mars Yard 1.0 and the 2.0s over my time in history. I had to unfortunately throw both of them in the bin because I legitimately wore them into the ground. I wore my Mars Yard so much that it had holes in them. It started to yellow, it started to stink up. Like I wore them everywhere, to the gym, nights out. They're amazing. I actually want to get another pair now, especially now that I'm cycling often. They're going to be perfect cycling shoes to put into flipping straps and shit because they've got a nice toe box and they can kind of, you know, they're good to kind of wear in the rain and blah 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 whatever i love my mars yards and i was really looking forward to the flipping 3.0s really looking forward to 3.0s because they were doing wear tests with the with the 2.5s that you see here on the screen mars yards and what they did with the mars yard is they gave it a ru- rubberized uh, toe box like a tip sorry toe so you know if you're working in a in a in the studio or whatever it may be and you had something heavy for on your toe it couldn't hurt and just in general to kind of aid in the bet wherever your movements are and then the upper was reinforced i think they had like a more of a drier nubuck finished they added some metal um rings around the eyelet so it wouldn't rare tear and rip and then they added this material i forgot what the name of it i think it might be tivex or rivex i've got the name but it's a particular type of plastic mesh that's waterproof so these shoes now became you know a shoe that i could wear all season round you can wear them in the summer obviously not the best because they probably wouldn't you know perspirate the best but especially in the uk where it rains a lot especially me because i'm running around in my bike all the time this will be perfect so it's a great update because the mesh mars yards i bought previously the 2.0s although they were great they were mesh and the water would seep through and it would go crazy but with the added benefit of them being waterproof or water resistant i was really looking forward to them especially because they were doing wear tests and they were improving them adding different soles so as long as they had this type of upper legitimately i was really happy and excited that these were coming out super happy and excited right really over the moon and i couldn't wait and this rumor happened a couple of days ago then all of a sudden nike puts in a call to flipping complex sneakers and gives them an official statement courtesy of the writer on there called brendan dude that also is one of the hosts on their sneaker podcast and look at what nike say they kill all my hopes that's why i'm shaking nike not working with tom Sachs. no releases planned you can't get more categorical than that they said i'm good love enjoy nike said nah no thank you and i was surprised because the whole tom Sachs controversy as you know displeasing as it was to some people to hear from the in conclusion, what he got exposed for was being a bit of a pain in the ass, being a toxic boss, being very hard to work with, being a bit of a cunt. I don't think anybody that's a fan of Tom Sachs, myself included, I followed Tom Sachs for many, many years. Um, I was a fan of the 10 Bullets principles for a long time. I know about his history with Casey Neistat and Vine Neistat, history with Nike, history within the Lower East Side and that whole New York scene and Aaron Bondrop, all these things. I'm very tapped in with Tom Sachs, but even I know, looking at this man, that more likely than not, he's going to be a bit of a cunt especially working for him data i think probably meeting him will probably be a great thing but you'd imagine somebody that has a very strict design kind of principles around how to work how to dress how to walk how to talk how to speak about your art how to communicate it for sure day to day you won't be the greatest boss in the world but i didn't think that was necessary or reason enough to cancel an entire nike collaboration especially not if they're gonna be the if, if you're not gonna be able to if you produce something like this i feel like if you're if you could produce a sneaker like this like the mars yard like i've said many times the mars yard sneaker for me and i wore them all the time this especially the 1.0 and the 2.0 which i had this was the only limited edition shoe quote unquote sneaker i've had in my entire life where i got compliments from regular people regular people would always say oh, i love those shoes i love those shoes i love those shoes that's when i knew he created a masterpiece this sneaker, regardless of whether or not Tom Sachs is a bit of a dickhead, will definitely go down in the sneaker hall of fame. For sure. 
it's a one of a lifetime kind of thing you just hit out the park the colors the bat you know the combination goes to what i always talk about about the free color combo being the key to success of you know less than three color combos nothing more than that it's kind of getting a bit crazy and it's going into nike id territory but you've got the browns and the reds and the blacks all there balanced perfectly with the off-white and the addition of this sole that he did perfectly added on there where it was purposely made to attract dirt and not be too s s clean and you know spanking the activation around it with the working out stuff and the using it and the not making it precious and putting it in a box and shit all that stuff was incredible and legendary i feel like if you can create a shoe like this so iconic you should be given the ability to be a bit of a dick at work if you can create a shoe like this you should be allowed to throw a moleskin at one of your assistants if you can if you can design a shoe like this you should be allowed to to draw dicks with a sharpie over your assistants flipping you know um m65 jackets because they didn't listen to what you said if you can create a shoe like this you should be allowed to dash a cup of coffee across the room because your assistant didn't get it right and you asked for a decaf with no milk you should be allowed you should be allowed to be a dick. You should be allowed to be a bit of a tyrant if you can do this. I swear to God. I'm so annoyed, man. I'm so annoyed. But I do get it from Nike's point of view, especially considering how hard they went at Kyrie Irving. Sorry. It'll be very difficult for them to chuck Kyrie out and cancel his Nike deal because he posted a screenshot of a documentary on Amazon. He said no words, nothing. He posted a screenshot of a documentary on Amazon and he lost his Nike deal. Nike didn't pull away any fucking money from Amazon. Amazon aren't going to stop trying to work with Nike. But Kyrie Irving lost his Nike deal and shoe because he posted a screenshot of a documentary on Amazon. So it was no surprise that Nike were never going to work with Tom Sachs again, especially in this era where everyone's about mental health in the workplace and feeling valued and blah, blah, blah. Bruh, you work in design. You work in fashion. These people, those industries are inherently toxic. They're full of some of the worst people to ever have worked the first of the earth. But we allow it because they're geniuses and they can make cool clothes or they can make cool activations or they're just culturally, you know, astute and got their finger on their pulse. But inherently, the design and the fashion industry are full of some of the worst people to have ever graced the earth. We all know this to be the fact. So what do you expect if you go and work for a guy who has a 10 bullet principle? He has essentially the 10 commandments of his design ethos of how you should live, of how you should approach the studio and how you should interact with the space around you. Put in your screwdrivers a certain way, having screws there, having books there, notes there, whatever. What, what did you expect? Of course, he's going to be an asshole. Of course, he's going to be a fucking asshole. He's not going to be a nice guy. Impossible going to be a nice guy. No one that looks like this by choice. Nobody that walks around with a washed out, um, you know, um, I forgot what the, it's a French jacket, right? A washed out flipping, you know, studio jacket every single day wearing the same clothing every single day is going to be a flipping cool dude. They're going to be a bit of a cunt. And if he's cool, it's a benefit. It's a bonus. But more than likely, anybody that walks around unironically with these clear flame grasses that work in design or arts or whatever, they're going to be a dickhead. Prove me wrong. Have you ever seen any person who wears glasses like this who isn't a dickhead? They're always dickheads. They always take themselves too seriously. Or those ones that don't have any, like, um, you know, whatever, those calls at the end of your flipping glasses, they just hang on your nose. Or they have those coloured glasses that are circle. Or they wear, like, a snazzy scarf. Or they roll their trousers up to expose their funky socks and shit. All those guys are dickheads. <laughs> like, it is what it is, you know? They take themselves very seriously. So usually that means they get the opportunity to have a little bit of, you know, spectrum tism -ish when it comes to the communication with regular people. So I'm really shocked and taken aback. I'm shaking, right? I'm distraught. My dreams have been ruined and I won't be able to get the Mars Yard 3.0s when they come out. But let's read the article in the Courtesy of Complex that talks about it because they cleared this up quickly. They were in no confusion. So the, the article from Complex Sneaker says as follows. A rumor circulating this week said that Nike was moving forward with the release of the Mars Yard 3.0 sneaker collaboration with Tom Sachs. The New York artist who went from star swoosh partner to persona non grata in March when a curbed report described his studio as a hostile work environment where he screamed the fruit objects at employees. Is that a big deal? Should you get your the Nike deal taken away from you because you scream and throw shit at employees from time to time? Especially if you create one of the greatest sneakers of all time. Should you really be taken, should your deal be taken away from that? 
Fair enough if you're ASAP Bari and you're, you know, seen slapping some girl's bare ass in a hotel and she's screaming no. That is bad for optics. You're a pest. We can't deal with you. Okay, cool. Take away his shoe. No problem. But should Tom Sachs and Kyrie really have their Nike deals be take away for them? One for a screenshot and one because he runs a quote-unquote hostile work environment? It's a design studio. Name your design studio where it's all sunshine and rainbows. Any place that has fucking pillows on the floor. Any place that lets you play snooker in the flipping staff room. There's a toxic element next to it. Honestly, there's a toxic element next to it. Let's not lie. Anyway, it continues. It says, a quote from Nike. We are not working with Tom Studio at this time and have no release dates planned. That is corporate speak for thank you, but next. See you later, sayonara. And I'm so pissed off, man. Damn it. So pissed off. It continues. It says Nike has what Nike at one point was developing a third Mars Yard sneaker, which Complex first reported for in March. Sneaker blog Soul Retriever wrote this week that his shoe was set for debut in holiday 2023, while adding a caveat that the Mars Yard 3.0 may get cancelled and scrapped altogether. Nike's comment implies the latter. So either you believe these sneaker bloggers, which I think is true. I feel a lot of these guys have their plugs and their connects. So it was in the works. It was in the works. It probably went to a vote. They probably had a big meeting with all the executives. It was in the release calendar. And they're like, you know what? Considering all the bad PR we already have out there, let's not do this. They're like, you know what? Let's just leave this for somebody else. We can't be doing this because everyone's going to be looking at us like we're monsters, like we're animals, and we don't need this smoke. So I think for PR purposes, they did it and they sacrificed one of the greatest shoe models ever and now won't be able to get it. And I'm absolutely distraught. I really am. It continues, says, Saks's work with Nike, which began over a decade ago and the original Marja sneaker 2012, it feels like just yesterday when I got them, <sighs> um, has um, among the sneakerheads most coveted and critically acclaimed well received. He established a partnership with Nike through his friendship with former CEO Mark Parker, who is an avid art collector and a patron of Saks. Oh, look at that, eh? That's a little bit of a conflict of interest, eh? No wonder you got the deal. Mark Parker. One of the people who's involved in the legendary line HTM, named after um, Hiroshi's Fujiwara, Tinker Hatfield and Mark Parker, where they made these really luxury, high quality Nike models, usually on Air Force Ones and shit. Amazing little sub label of Nike. If, you're, if you know, you know. Wow. I didn't know that. So they're friends, right? They're friends. They're close friends. He, Mark Parker's even a patron. He supports Tom Sachs' patron shit um artists recently expanded his sneaker catalog in 2022 with nike through the general purpose shoe a model more widely available in limited edition mars yards sas is poised to sell a significant amount of sneakers the general purpose shoe had more colorways to come so the general purpose shoe is also gone that's that's what basically what my shoe ended up looking like right um they came after the allegations in march and uh, he appeared on a virtual meeting okay this this allegation is a bit much because i still don't think it's enough to get fired because you run the place if i run the place and I'm coming on Zoom, I'm allowed to pop out from the shower, especially if I've got underwear on, I can do that if I own the company, surely. I'm not fucking dancing there like Brian, Brian Kelly in front of the camera, but if I want to shout some instructions and tell you guys to, you know, put a rocket up here, I'll say, come on, deliver the, the project. I want that wooden sculpture of a spaceship made ASAP, right? I'm allowed to do that sometimes in wherever I've got on just to kind of rally the troops. But this is, this is an article courtesy of um, Complex, it says this, then came the allegation in March that he appeared at a virtual meeting with women employees from Nike wearing his underwear. <laughs> oh, okay, I got it wrong. So the problem wasn't that he was doing it in front of Tom Sachs' employees. It was that he had a meeting with Nike and he turned up on stream or on conference with his fucking boxer briefs on on Teams. That's, that's a no-go. You can't come on Slack. You can't come on Zoom. You can't come on Microsoft Teams wearing your underwear, even if you are the boss and think you're going to be cool. Someone's going to complain um, that he used to have space at his studio called the rape room. Oh, OK, cool. This this gets a bit dicey that now he's losing me. Now Tom Sachs is losing me. He had a, he, he had a space at his studio called the rape room that the wall hung first. Um, an aid kit in the office of Sachs, who is Jewish, had a swastika taped over it. He had a rape room in his studio. All right, you're gonna have to give me some context here. You're gonna have to help me out, Tom Sachs, mate. I'm, I'm fighting for you here. I'm trying to fight for your, your right to fucking design and scream at your employees and throw cups of coffee at them. But when it comes to rape rooms, 
You have to give me something to work with here. It continues. Um, it says here, the quote from Nike at the time was, we're deeply concerned by the very serious allegations. We're in contact with Tom and his studio, seeking to better understand the situation and how these issues have been addressed. This sounded like to me when Kim Kardashian tried to excuse the whole shit about um, Balenciaga and the BDSM bears. She was like, oh yeah, we're working. I'm assessing everything. We're talking over what we happened. It was like a non-comment. But it looks like they didn't want anything to do with him in the slightest and they just were kind of let, letting him down slowly. In the wake of the Curb report, um, uh, the artist sent out a letter to his staff in March showing some contrition, Saxis scraps a rape room name as a regret uh, and a poor reference that was done away years ago. He said in the letter that he had been brought in outside help to formalize human resources. So they don't have any HR. So he's brought in HR in the letter, which was sent to Complex by a rep from his studio. Sax pushed back on the characterization of him in the media as a tyrant who fostered an unsafe workplace. He said, and I quote, I've never tried to make anyone feel uncomfortable. I have never harassed anyone and I would never intentionally harm anyone safety is a top priority in my studio those are the facts that's hilarious isn't it how can you say you never made someone feel uncomfortable if i say you make me feel uncomfortable you made me feel uncomfortable you have to acknowledge my feelings and if you t if you throw something at somebody that's putting them into harm or even saying bad words that's putting them in harm's way but he's just denying it <laughs> that's how you know he's a tyrant he doesn't acknowledge any pain that he's flipping inflicted on people. I did not I did not make people feel uncomfortable. I did not harass. But sir, you just threw a coffee cup at this girl's face because she didn't get the milk right. Nope, that didn't happen. Okay. Um, Sax rep declined to comment on sales relationship with Nike, blah, 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 blah. So now we know more than likely that the prices of the fucking Mars yards on StockX are going to go shoop, through the roof. And I'm pissed because I won't be able to get a pair. But yeah, RIP Tom Sachs and Nike. I really, really wanted the 3.0s. I'd hoped there would be these 2.5 wear test models that had the flipping rubberized toe and uh, reinforced eyelets and, uh, you know, updated materials on the mesh to make them more water resistant and shit. I really hoped it would be those because I'd wear them every day. Now I can't. So now I have to resort to buying a pair of replicas from fucking China because the resale on these shoes is crazy. It's crazy. I don't even want to check it because it's going to make me scared. But I'm going to have to go to my Shen, my Shenzhen Mandem. Pick up my rep sneakers Mandem. I'm going to have to do what I didn't want to do because Nike isn't doing away with putting away, you know, workplace harassment and putting the shoes out. So now I have to do what I need to do to get the shoes and go to China. Let's actually check these actually. Mars Yard 2.0 StockX. Let's see how much they are. They've probably gone up in price. Last time I checked, it was like £5,000. Let's see how much they are now. Oh, look at that. Just a, just, just, a, just a preview here on StockX.com, the UK site, right? The UK site in pounds. They're between £3,316 to £4,796. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. So Nike have, once again, because I'm a big believer that Nike creates artificial scarcity with limited edition shoes. They can make more than enough to supply demand, but they like all the beef. They like all the cues. They probably weirdly like people getting stabbed in cues and shot and shit and robbed for their shoes because it adds to the marketing and name recognition and SEO searches. It's flipping dark and sad, but it kind of is what it is. They can make more shoes, but they refuse to. And they create artificial scarcity to make people go out like myself to kind of haul ourselves over, bend over and spread our ass cheeks so that we can get pummeled by fucking Nike over these shoes that we want and we want to purchase. We have money to purchase them, but they don't make it easy to purchase. And then it inadvertently creates this secondary market of reselling where people basically resell sneakers like limited edition pieces of art. Some people say it's art, it's not it's sneakers, but it pisses me off because look at that. The last sale of these shoes, I don't know what size it was, but the last sale was 2,809. Are you insane? Let's actually check the last sales here. 2,809. And I paid for mine, wherever the retail was. I think the retail was like 120 or something like that. I paid retail for mine. And it's going for 2,000 plus pounds. And it's even more in my size because I have a general, I have like an average general male size shoe. I'm like anywhere between like a US 11 to a US 12. And that size most men are that size. Even if you're a US 10, you could probably size up to a US 11. So I'm always fucked when it comes to it. Look, oh my God. Look at this. The last sale in my size in US 11 was three grand. Three thousand. Oh my God. That is horrendous. Look at that. Three thousand, man. 
That is kind of scary. I'm not going to lie. 3,000 was the last sale of the Mars Yard 2.0 in the US 11. 3,000 pounds. I cannot imagine paying £3,000 for a pair of sneakers. It's already enough having to pay 700 for a pair of Balenciagas. I think that's the last time I paid any amount of money in that kind of way, in that kind of range, right? Balenciaga triple S's, that kind of like 500 plus kind of mark. But 3000 for a pair of Nikes. And again, the, the, the issue about the secondary market, especially when you consider the current court case happening with fucking um, StockX and Nike, the StockX verification system is kaputs and the level of the quality in replicas now is so high, there is no real way to tell if what you're buying from StockX is actually legit. The only way you know you're buying legit shoes now, honestly, this is coming from somebody that I would deem myself to be a sneaker head and I have some knowledge of these things because I've been buying sneakers for the majority of my life. The only way you can tell, the only way you can tell a shoe is legit is if you buy it on release date. You ever buy it on sneak? You get, you know, you're able to get it lucky on sneakers um, app, or you're able to buy them in retail when they drop. But if you have to buy a shoe after the drop from a secondary site, there is no way you can know it's legit. No way, because the rep qualities now are so good, so good nowadays. Especially if you want to buy reps, because now there are reps where they sell them the same price as retail Jordans. But obviously, you have the ability to buy however many, however many you want, anytime you want, like fragment Jordans. Uh, black toe Jordan ones, uh, undefeated Jordans, whatever Jordan you want, right? All those limited edition shoes, Air Maxes, you can buy them reps and they're sold as retail prices, but usually the quality is super high. So there's no way to discern the fakes from the reals, especially if you wear them. If you want to have them in a box and you want to have them, maybe someone can spot the differences and it's still cool. But if you wear them day to day, there's no way anybody can tell unless you're actually a G and you actually know Wagwan and you actually got your finger on the pulse to tell. Or maybe you buy a poor quality fake because there's fakes that exist that are like 30 pounds. But man, 3,000. Now nah, I have to go Shenzhen. Yeah, as um as uh, Sleeping Buddha says, Chinese fakes it is then. I have to go, I'm going to have to regrettably go to my Chinese mandem and get a couple more pairs because I think the Mars Yards are a perfect shoe to wear, especially for me cycling uh, most days and running around town. But £3,000, no thank you, man. But yeah, RIP the Nike um, Tom Sachs collaboration and relationship. It is now no more, as we now learn, courtesy of Complex. I'm sad, I'm shaking, I'm angry, I'm upset. As Brendan said, I'm mad, I'm fucking mad, and uh, <laughs> I can't talk. Yeah. <laughs>